Hey, here we go with my 2017-2018 reflection. I'm super excited about doing this video compilation because I've had a phenomenal year, both personally and professionally. It's had a lot of wins, some losses that I've learned from, and some ups and downs, but all in all, I have had a great ride this year. First and foremost, I ended up with a new job. I'm sitting in my new office right now to do this video. Uh, that has to do with me helping, helping me fulfill my why a little more every day, every year. We'll talk more about that a little later on in the video. Also, I read 24 books this year. What? I can't believe I read 24 books this year, but I did. And that has to do with something new I've been doing to help improve myself continuously on a personal level, level each and every day. I've also been able to reach more people by building a positive culture and community among faculty, students, community members, just people in general helping make the educational process a lot better for all those involved. And I've been able to increase the amount I've presented. I've given more presentations this year, participated in more conferences than I ever thought I would. And I am extremely grateful for every moment of that. But like I said, I mentioned something about books. Check it out. You know, here's the thing about reading. It has to do with empowerment, learning, and reflection. See, reading is so important because it opens us up to a whole new world of knowledge and perception that we wouldn't have had unless we had cracked that book and looked into what some other people had to say. For me, I find that it's been very powerful over the past year for this. And what I do is I make sure I take that critical step after I read. I reflect on it, I take margin notes personally, and then I try to put into action a couple of things out of those books. This is something upon reflection that I need to get a lot better at, but I'm working at it. And as far as learning goes, books teach us something. And if we're to truly teach other people, then we have to continually learn because as teachers, when we're doing what we should be doing, the students are teaching us almost as much as we're teaching them. And that's why it's important because learning is always reciprocal if we're open to it. If your learning is empowering others, and engaging and relevant, then everybody learns more and the circle continues. So speaking about empowerment, here are a couple of examples of how over the past year I've empowered students, teachers, and the community to help each other continuously learn and improve their situation. Check it out. We got the snow, we're snow blowing. We got, we definitely got school tomorrow. This is perfect. What? What? We're going to school tomorrow. No, yeah, no, 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 What are you talking about? Yeah. 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 Okay, okay, no school, no school. All right. No school on Friday, stay good. You're welcome. Uh, With that at culture building and including people and getting everybody on the same page, what one of the byproducts was that really meant a lot to me is that some of my ideas around culture and how to support students really began to gain traction. Really took root with some other administrators, teachers, and people, and that led to me presenting at way more conferences this past year than I ever thought I possibly would. I like presenting, and ever since I got my first presentation, second presentation underneath my belt, I really enjoyed it, but I never thought I'd be doing it as much as I did, and boy, I really do love it and am flattered by the idea of being able to present. It started um, last summer at the MSAA, Massachusetts State Administrators Association, and um, that was at their summer institute and I presented on breaking down the walls of communication for that one. And then, you know, I presented at MassQ, which is the Massachusetts Computer Using Educators. And that conference I presented on, um, 
the year-long staff meeting. And so from there, I was asked, which I was incredibly flattered, to present, be part of a team, and co-present at ASCD's national conference in Boston. And that was a full year before I ever intended applying to present at a national conference. So I was pretty psyched about that. And that had to do with winter school, and it was an Ignite presentation, which is a different type. And then this past summer, I presented two sessions, again, at the Massachusetts State Administrators Association Summer Institute. The first one I scheduled, and it was about supporting all students through creative programming. And that had to do with personal development class and winter school. And then I was asked to do another Ignite presentation um, with another group. So I was super psyched about that, and it meant a lot. But one of the things that I learned through all these presentations about this whole idea of getting up in front of people and doing workshops and presentations is that's, it's, it's about empowerment. See, I learn so much when I do this because you have to refine. You're forced to think about what you're actually saying, what message you're sending, and it makes you relearn the material, reacquaint yourself with everything, and really see where you stand and really understand what you're saying and the impact of what you're saying. And then the feedback you get is fantastic. Not to mention when you go to these conferences, the amount of knowledge is incredible. And so those are opportunities for me to grow, make connections, and learn more ways to help empower students, staff, community members, and make education and school an all-around better place, a better experience for everybody involved. So, who would I be if I didn't show you some pictures from those events? So, check these out, and then I'll get back to you. as I wrap this reflection up. I really, as I mentioned before, found out about my why this past year. I really began to further define it and clarify it so that it was something that was a calling to me, something that was so ingrained in me and so close to me that it really had an impact on every decision I made. And that is to make the educational experience better for everyone involved. That's students, that's teachers, that's parents, leaders, community members. The educational system and learning has to be a better experience for everybody. And we have to change how that's, how that's given to people because times change. And if we don't change with the times, we can't engage people the same way we did. We can't encourage people to be successful and to learn. We can't empower people to be the best version of themselves they can possibly be unless we do that. And that's my why, to get to that, to improve the system so that happens. Also, upon reflecting this past year, I've realized I have so much to learn, so much left to learn, and yet I have so much to give to people. I'm incredibly grateful for everything that's been given to me and opportunities that have been afforded to me, and I am still a work in progress. I will continuously improve, and I will continue to be a positive, influential force in the lives of as many people as possible on this journey to making it a better experience for everyone. Where are you going this year? Where have you been? I hope to see you in the future. Thanks for taking the time.